This is test two of the AccuPlacer number 18. So we have two equations here. Um, two lines given by the equations above intersect on the xy plane. What is the value of the y coordinate of the point of intersection? So let's do a quick review here. This is the xy plane that they're talking about. And as I've said in earlier videos, x is on the ground and y goes to the sky. So y goes up and down, x goes left and right. So this is going from zero to positive infinity, zero to negative infinity. zero to positive infinity, and this is negative infinity on the y-axis. So y to the sky, x is on the ground, left and right. So horizontal, vertical. And what they're asking is, is we have to figure out what these two lines look like in this type of universe. So the easy one is this x equals 3. Now here's where they trick you. you. Sometimes you'll have a constant where it's saying x or y equals something. If it's x, you would think that it would go horizontal because that's where it is, but no, that's not true. What they're asking you is, they're saying is that x equals 3 and y is everything else. It's everything on this line, so it can be any value on there. So this would be graphed Let's do this color. So this one looks like that. So x equals 3, and then we'd say 3, and it's going to be every point on this vertical up and down line. So it's everything on this line, up and down. So here we have x equals 3. Okay. Now if it said y equals 5, it would be a horizontal line over here. But it's not saying y, it's saying x. Now the next thing is, is we have to figure out the graph of this line to see where they intersect. Now, I'm going to show you two ways to do this where we graph the, the line wherever it crosses on this line here, that's your answer. However, there is another way where we get the exact point. So we're going to do both ways just as a review. So the next thing I want to do is I want to convert this equation into a form that I can graph easily. So let's do that. So I'll put this aside. So what I want to do is I want to convert this into y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Y-intercept means where does this line cross this vertical y-axis. So we'll find the y-intercept. Uh, and then what I'll do is then I'll find another point and then we connect the two lines and then we, if we find a second point on this, once you have two points you can create the line and figure out where it crosses. Maybe across up here or down here or on the x-axis, who knows? We'll find that out. So I'm going to take this equation 3x minus 2y equals 15. I want to get this 3x over here because I just want to end up with the y by itself. So what I'm going to do is subtract 3x from both sides. So watch this. I do negative 3x, negative 3x. So positive 3x, negative 3x, they disappear and I'm going to bring down the negative to y. So then I have these two terms. I always like to have the variables up front, so I'm going to put this like this. I'm going to take that negative 3x, put it in the front, 
And that's a positive. Always remember, if it doesn't have a sign in front, it's positive plus 15. So I've gone from this to this. These are the same. I've just moved that 3x over to the other side by subtracting 3x. So the next thing I want to do is I want to change this negative 2 into a positive 1. And the way I do that is I divide it by itself. So I put negative 2 on the bottom because a negative over a negative is a positive. If I have the same on the top and the same on the bottom, that simplifies to 1. Now, if I divide everything on this side by negative 2, I have to do everything, both pieces, by negative 2. So watch this. Negative 2, negative 2. So negative over a negative is positive. It's a, so we know that equals 1. I don't need to write a 1 here. So now I can just write y. So we're almost done. Look, y, y. Then I have to take this and figure out what this is. Now, a negative over a negative is a positive. A negative over a negative is a positive. So negative 3 over negative 2 is the same as positive 3 over 2x. So look, we have this, and now we have this. So the slope m is 3 over 2. And since it's positive, we know that it's uphill. And we're going to talk about that in a second. And now here we have positive 15 over a negative 2. So a positive over a negative is a negative. So this goes like this. And this is the same as a negative 15 over 2. Now, I want to put that into an improper fraction just so we can make it a little easier to graph. So negative 15 over 2 is the same. Here, let me put a little, let's put a, a pink box around that so you know what I'm talking about. Is the same as negative 7 and 1 half. And the reason I want to do that is because I can find negative 7 and a half is right there. It's in between negative 7 and negative 8. That's pretty easy to find. But I don't know if I could count 15 over 2, 15 halves down here, which is there. But I didn't break this down into halves. I broke this down into negative whole number, well, negative integers. So we have negative 7 and a half. So we'll save that for later. Now, let's talk about this rise over run. So we have negative 7 and a half. So that's our y-intercept. So we've already found our first point. So the first point is negative 7 and a half. So all we have to do is find a second point, and then we can graph it. So we have to find another point to generate the line. We know it's positive, so it's going to go uphill somehow. Okay, and the way you look at slope, slope, and I'm sure you've heard this before, is rise, that's how much it goes up and down, over run. So this can only be to the right. So up and down. So if it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. So we know that this is a positive number. So we have that's going to equal the rise is positive 3. And the run is 2. Positive 2. It always is going to be positive because you can only graph to the right. So what we do, we take the rise over run from this graph. We go up three. One, two, three. So I went up three. And then I'm going to go over two. One, two. So we go from this point to that point. And now that we have two points, 
we can graph it. So I'll switch to this color. And there's our line. So now that I've found the point that intersects the two lines, it's right here, I can visually see that it's at negative 3, positive 3. So the x is positive 3, and the y is negative 3. It's right there. Now I'm visually identifying this. So, you know, your eyes aren't perfect, so it does look like it hits where they're exactly. So that's what I think the point is. So... We have our x and we have our y. x is positive 3, 1, 2, 3, and y is negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And so I put that there, and I can see, if you go back to the original problem, they're asking where, what is the value of the y-coordinate of the point of intersection, where it is negative 3. Now, what I want to do is try the second technique. So the second technique is we're going to take the x equals 3 and we're going to replace the x with the 3 and then solve for y. So watch this. So we have 3x minus 2y equals 15. So I'm going to go 3, we're going to replace the x with a 3, minus 2y equals 15. So 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2y equals 15. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. So minus 9, minus 9. 9 minus 9 goes away. 15 minus 9 is 6, equals negative 2y. Now again, be very careful not to lose that negative. So the way to get rid of the negative 2 is to divide both sides by negative 2, because if you divide on the left by negative 2, you have to divide the right by negative 2. So negative 2 over negative 2 is 1. That simplifies to 1. So we're not going to write 1y. Now we can just write y. Now we have a positive 6 over a negative 2. A positive over a negative is a negative. So we know that this sign is going to be negative. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So now that we know that y equals 3 and x equals 3, positive 3, so the coordinate is 3, comma, negative 3. And if we go back to the original problem, again, the y is negative 3. And then if we go to the graph, visually, it lines up. But also, we've proven that the point is positive 3, and then the y is indeed negative 3.